run Tiger King as well, uh, because Dragoons of Draconia are Beast Warriors. Okay. So nothing here needs any explanation, I guess? Not necessarily. Uh, what's with the Ptolemy? Two, Same like yeah, the... you've got two level six All right. to be able to just start returning stuff. Uh, it's allowing you to get back any sort of searches that you need. Welcome back to the coverage of YCS Bochum 2015. I'm your host for the weekend, Oliver German, and I'm now joined again by Robert Hooley. It's good to be back. Yes. How did you enjoy your break? Oh, it was great. I picked up some really nice cards from uh, our card vendors that we usually have at the uh, yeah the, the shows. I, I've heard that uh, our staff guys that are helping us with the stream that are entering the card data are actually running short on money because after every match they have seen on the stream, they were picking up the cards that they think yes. are now going to go up. And uh, for example, Gustav Max, they were like, oh my god, i got to get it before it goes yeah. up in before price. <laughs> yeah, so this is some of the benefits that you're uh, reaping the reward, really, of standing on your feet all day, entering cards into an app for you guys and us, of course. And um, yeah, at least they are prepared. Yep, that definitely. volcanics are going to be a thing from now on, just as mecha phantom beasts. While Nino Zimmermann, who we had in our Round 5 feature match with his Phantom Beasts, he did advance to the Top 32, mm -hmm. uh, got kicked out in the Top 32 or Top 16, I'm not 100% sure. Um, the other creative deck that we've seen, the Volcanic Heroes of Lars Junginger, however, still in competition. Going up against Luca Cetoni in this round, it's not the match we're featuring. Um, we got, of course, four matches, and three of those we have seen one of the players in the feature match before. So we wanted to pick the one somebody match. That, yeah, somebody that we've never seen in the feature match. Yeah, some fresh before. faces for you guys. And uh, it's also, it also happens to be quite an interesting match with uh, Benedikt Jung from Germany playing Clifford against Chepe Paper Corey from the Netherlands, who is playing Shadol. So let's take you to the table. Let's not waste any time because the rest of the field has already started and we don't want to fall behind too much. And uh, let's see how this game is going. We already got the cards in on the right-hand side of the screen. And uh, it looks like uh, Chepe is going first. Yes. Yep, and here's a Star Seraph Scepter, Scepter. and there's the Sovereignty in hand, so there is going to be an immediate. He's actually... Uh, it looks like Benedict's actually just asking there whether... Should I drop Effect Veil is what yeah. he's asking there. It is, yeah, there's that, and I think he's also asking how he's building the chain. All right. Um, in case you guys are interested, and I think you are, we got four Necros decks remaining in the field. This is the only match without a Necros deck in there. We got a mirror match between Federico Sopini, who we have just seen in our last feature match, who's going up against Long Dao, both playing Necros. The reigning Defending European champion Eugen Hyde plays Necros and he's going up against Peter Meyer, who we've seen before, playing Clifford, just like Benedict. And the last uh, feature, uh, not feature match, but top eight match, which I already uh, told you guys, Luca Cetoni, also Necros player, going up against Lars Junginger's Volcanic Heroes. Okay, so we uh, the Star Seraph play got interrupted halfway through, but a Sovereignty came down, so a card was still drawn. A Book of Moon was set and then it passed turn. Help start Goblin. Mm -hmm. Thinning out the deck a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Now there's two Helix, sorry, three mm. Helixes and a Vanity's Emptiness in hand. It would have been nice if any of those had a, had a different Pendulum yeah. scale on it. Unfortunately not. Oh, hang on, he has just drawn into a Carrier. We just oh. had it update on our screen here. Yep. So that's, uh, Benedict is asking again, how does everything work out? So here's the Carrier. Okay, so Carrier down, Helix down, Pendulum summon one of them, tribute it, destroy the back row. Is your basic play. Yep, seems like Chepe. But the is chain's gonna happen. Aware of that. Yes, what is the back row card? It is a Book, Book of, of moon. moon. Another very old card that's still making a showing at the top tables. Such a versatile card. Get you out of the chin lock, for example. And also flipping, but if you flip it face down, it's got its uh, original attack and uh, attack. Well, if it's flipped up again, right? Because it's not too sure whether a flip someone counts as a normal someone in this situation. Uh, no, no, no. That's what, not what I mean. But the effect that it halves the stats or that the, the attack is going down is being uh, reset when it is flipped face down. I think. 
But I think it doesn't matter, to be honest, because... It only has a thousand defense. Yeah, he's going to run over it with the Star Seraph. Swing, <laughs> swingy. Thinking about attacking with the Thunder King here. Okay, and uh, he's just set a core. And he didn't attack directly, is that correct? I believe he did. Because I, I didn't see him declaring an attack with uh, Thunder King. But of course we don't have audio from the table. Um, we only see what's what's happening. All right. Hand and gestures. And Pendulum Summon has just happened. A tr Another tribute summon? Yeah, no, he's tributed. Uh, no, no, yeah, and Thunder King leaves the field to make sure, uh, to negate that Pendulum Summon. All right, let's bring up the hand of Chepe. He actually set the core, I believe. It's not just not updated on our app. Okay. And he's also running the Pero Pero Cerber Cerberus. Yes. Pero Pero Cer Cerberus, <laughs> yes. Um, incredibly good card. It's such a cuddly little beast. Really? You think that was cuddly? Absolutely. Oh, you must really love the Fright for Monsters, surely. Oh, yeah. And uh, Benedict is out of cards in his hand. That's definitely a page he took out of his previous book of how to play his decks because he's a big fan of the Dark World archetype. Um, okay, he's declaring the pendulum, I believe. And uh, he's got those... The char in case you're wondering, because it's always very confusing, there are zero monsters on in the monster card zone, and still you see two monsters on the right-hand side. Those are the pendulum cards, just to make sure. Then you guys get that okay, right. Okay, so Mystical Space Typhoon is hitting a core. Yep, taking that down. And out comes the carrier. And does he have anything in his hand that will help at this moment? He has a Recliate, which um, it's still mm, his monster is still on plus 300, and all of his, all of his opponent's monsters are on minus 300. So he is going to be able to just run something over. In this case, it was Sovereignty. Yep, that he does. Okay, so Recliate has been set, and that's going to start negating effects. And when do you flip Recliate? I don't think he fears a Denko Seca. And it's interesting because Benedict was almost out of resources, but those pendulum summons getting him back into the game. This is really the, the core thing to keep in mind when you're playing Klee. You are the favorite going into the late game. Yes, but to be honest with you, it, that's the same with any pendulum deck. The whole idea of pendulums is you have monsters that just won't go away. Yeah, and uh, Benno setting a fiendish chain. Uh, play is back to Chepe, however. Still not 100% sure how to pronounce yet the name. He's got a Shell Falco, Effect Veiler, and Mathematician in hand. Uh, he has the ability to Synchro Summon, if he has any in his deck. Let's have a quick check. Oh, he has Leo, Star Eater, Arcanite Magician. Yep, yeah, that's his uh, selection of Synchros there. And uh, let's see who you guys haven't really been voting on this match. But uh, earlier we saw that the the opinions are going in different directions. And a couple of times, even when it looked like one guy was winning, for example, Lars Junginger with his Volcanic deck, the majority of folks in the Twitch chat thought he would not have a chance against it all. Yeah. And then he showed everybody that the Volcanic heroes are... They oh, are a thing. to be reckoned with, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is a thing. All right. So Phoenix Shane shutting down the mathematician that comes down for Chepe. And uh, Benedict Jung mm. applying more and more pressure. Normal summoning a stealth, which is an interesting move. Okay, stealth attacking in. And uh, when Mathematician goes to the graveyard, he does get to still draw a card. And also, he didn't flip his Recliate. I don't believe he thinks he needs to right now. He's going to save it. But don't you want to have the full attack for the stealth? Mm, not too sure where he's going. We'll just have to see. Hmm. All right. There goes... Uh, was it a Falco? No, that's a Pero Pero Serperus. So here we go. He's going to start being able to destroy cards when he takes damage. And here's a Shadow Fusion, but unfortunately, there is the Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah. Does he have anything to chain? 
No, he does not. He only has a mistake, which is something that he may be feeling he's made. Right, and uh, Chepe forced into a very, very defensive position here. He's hanging in the ropes right now, just setting a Falco, and that's also not going to help that much, is it? He's kind of. At this point, he's not going to be coming back. There is very, very little he could actually pull together to be able to come back. There's Watch a monolith that. hitting play. He's tributed it, which is tributed the helix going to the extra deck and would destroy a spell trap card. So there goes the mistake as well. Right, so Benedict Jung picking apart his opponent who was on 6,500 life points prior to that turn. Um, now he takes damage. That allows him to trigger the Pero Pero Serperus. Which I believe doesn't destroy it. It destroys the, the damage, does it? No, no, it doesn't. It just says when you take damage. Uh, you are then allowed to destroy a card on the field and then you, you get the one-two punch of uh, destroying another card which ends up in the graveyard and this then triggers the Vanity's Emptiness which also ends up in the graveyard. So Reckley has now gone as well. And he's going to Pendulum Summon. Yeah. Shadow Fusion. Shadow Fusion, that is how you draw cards from the top of your deck. That is, yes, you generally pick them up. Um, and then put them into your hand. <laughs> yes, that. No, I, was, I was more <laughs> aiming. <laughs> I, I <understand>. yeah, All <laughs> right. But thank you. Uh, uh, he has special summon from the extra deck because those are pendulum monsters. A little bit of a mistake. He hadn't actually had anything on the field that was from the extra deck until he did that, which has set up Shadow Fusion to be able to send cards from the deck. All right, we've just been told that uh, we were using the wrong name, or I was using the wrong name, uh, last name of uh, Chepe, because it's Peppercorn. It sounds like Pfefferkorn, a German word, uh, which is pepper, piece of pepper. <laughs> and um, that is mostly because the printout was incorrect. He never wanted to have his name corrected in the sendings. Oh. For whatever reason. Interesting. If that happens to you guys, you can just go up to the scorekeeper and tell him, or like write it down on your resale entry slip, hey, this is not actually my name. Which in turn ensures that we're going to get it right. Yeah, you can always change your name at any point. However, changing Cosi ID generally isn't. All right. So, Chepe does have a Star Seraph sovereignty. I think I can never say this correctly. No, you said sovereignty, right? All right. <laughs> no, you got it. And he found a right Geki. Oh. He Ooh, that is nasty. My hey, God, yep. Yugi himself couldn't have done that better. Finding the Shadow Fusion on top of his deck, followed by a Rai Geki. Sending a dragon to the graveyard as well, just to pop th one of the Pendulum cards, so there's no more Pendulum summons. Wow, this is destiny drawing at its best. And suddenly, Benedict Jung is left without a field. And Benedict just got an Upstart Goblin, and I believe he just drew into an Upstart Goblin that he also played. All right, so he's causing Chepe's life points to go up twice, and then he's forced to pass play, not being... Oh, oh he Rageki. found the right key of his own. Wow. The, the outcome is that the Falco and... Uh, just returns itself. A fusion is going to... A shadow fusion should go to hand at this point. Yeah, now we see the reason why Raigeki was uh, limited rather than banned two lists ago. It doesn't really do that much against Shadow. No, no, not at all. And there's a Sovereignty in hand, so there is an immediate... Yeah, you, you can see where this is going. Yeah. And what a swingy game. It looked like Benedict had this, and suddenly Chepe finds the perfect out. Ooh, and set goes a beast. And down should come the Shadow Fusion now. Oh, no, but he's going to poke with the bird. Interestingly. Maybe and there's an El Shadow Fusion, which is then going to so he's bring out. He's doing I believe that's actually game. Yeah, he's no, he's he's done it to poke with the bird. Exactly. So he's he can pop, do pop. more damage this way because the El Shadow Fusion is of course a quick play spell card, which means he can activate it in the middle of the battle phase after the first attack connected, and then the second attack with the monster that he just summoned to the field, which would have been a construct. Yep. Monsters, they're cards that special summon things like Al Shadow Fusion, Mask Change, uh, Ritual Beast Bond, things like that wins games. Yeah, if you know how to play them. Yes, definitely. And, uh, well, we can tell 
Chepe does know how to play them. All right, so 1-0 for the Netherlands. Very good news if you're rooting for the Netherlands. Now, here's the siding. Uh, Shadol is actually playing Secret Village of the Spellcasters. Uh, I don't know if people know, but I think it's pretty much every single Shadow card is a Spellcaster. Uh, so that's going to stop Klee from playing any spell cards, which includes the Pendulum. Right, so this might be the hottest side deck tech that we've seen all weekend long, even though we've seen quite a few good cards. Is there anything else that can uh, wreak havoc on the Klee archetype that Benedict is piloting? Um, Vanity's Fiend is quite big, but Klee don't actually need to be able to special summon, so that's not a big issue. Um, Crush Card Virus is going to, everything is going to be over, is over that amount, um, well, except Scout. Uh, Scout is on a thousand, but Crush Card Virus will still be very, very nasty. Uh, mind control if he's running Shekinaga, hmm. which I believe he is as well. All right, let's talk about Benedict's deck then. He's got emergency teleports in the side deck, recover, Majesty's Fiend, Vanity's Fiend, Stormforth of the uh, mo the Monarch Stormforth. What is two times Storm? <laughs> uh, storm, I believe, is you pay to destroy cards on the field equal to the amount of face-up spell card, spell trap cards you've got. we got a couple of cards with the name, with Storm in the name. And uh, destroy as many spell trap cards you control as possible, then, then destroy, destroy as many yeah. your opponent controls as possible, up to the number of cards destroyed by this effect. Yeah, so it is a, it's a nice little thing, but it's not really going to be doing anything against yeah. Shadow. And, and you see the two players smiling. That is because they are picking up the background noise because with the slight delay that we have on the stream, our audience in the venue has just seen how the first match was decided. And <laughs> that was sick, sick top decks. It was. From uh, Chefe with that uh, Shadow Fusion and the Raigeki made all the difference. Yeah, everybody's uh, he's actually noticing the fact of, of what I mentioned there, that he definitely should not have Pendulum summoned from the extra deck to, to make that Shadow Fusion live. If right. that hadn't happened, then it would have been a very, very different story. All right. And um, what do you think about Benedict's move of summoning from the extra deck in the first place? Because he didn't have to in that match. All right, we're ready for the second game. Interestingly, Jeppe is playing Sukuyomi, which is just nice. And uh, Benedict is kicking things off in the second game. And we don't have the cards yet. Uh, there we go, as a carrier. Ooh. So down comes the Thunder King Ryo with a Shadow Fusion for Winder. Wow, this, this is going to hurt. So there's some negation there as well. Falco is coming back out. And there is the, uh, the village of the spellcast, secret village of the spellcast. So uh, now, fortunately, there is going to be no pendulum no pendulum cards. There's a Book of Moon. And the, both of the Monarch Storm Forth that is sat in uh, Benedict's hand is now completely useless. He cannot actually play any of the cards that he has. And all of those monsters have higher attacks than the one monster that he has. He is losing on turn two but, uh, currently. Didn't he? Wasn't he able to chain that Book of Moon to the activation of the Secret Village? Um, probably, but he didn't. Yeah, but it would have been isn't possible. Thunder King Ryo also? No, Thunder King Ryo is no, probably Thunder. It's a Thunder. <laughs> that, it's kind of in the name, isn't it? That would yeah. be a silly thing to say. Winner just can't be destroyed. It's not like unaffected by uh, effects. Yeah. So uh, he should have flipped down Winder with the Book of Moon, I think. I just don't think that he thought about that. Maybe a little bit of a misplay. Hmm, this is actually incredibly good against Necros as well. <laughs> While you think about it. Yeah. Because he doesn't even run any traps at all. Yeah. All right. So I think he's just checking as well and just going, yeah, Falco is a spellcaster also. Yeah, but uh, the face down spellcasters yeah. don't don't really matter. I, I know. I think he was just asking wh whether it was or not. All right. So 
Benedict found a monster, the Clifford Helix. But at the moment, he's not really doing anything at all. That gets attacked over. And the Star Sarah Sovereignty was just drawn into there, not really doing anything. But there is a massive attack that is going to go on here for 4,000, nearly a ridiculous amount. <laughs> 4,100. <laughs> just trying to remember their attacks. Yeah. Benedict, after just two turns of Chepe, standing with his back against the wall, almost defeated in this quarter final and wow that was that's such an explosive start uh, what is Benedict hoping for here mirror force would be good mirror force would be good does but he run mirror force not running mirror force nope nope uh, in fact is he running anything that helps yeah exactly that's my question here no is the answer no he can't actually get over it so he, he, he flips he, it, he, yeah, he can't, he's he can't do it. Extending anything. the hand, that wow. is it. Chepe Peppercorn applies the turn one kill. Yeah. You thought the that chin was lock ridiculous. was. Yeah, you thought the chin lock was good. Nope. Secret Village of the Spellcaster is so much better, at least against Clifford. But we can definitely see why Chepe has actually come all the way through to to where he is now. Yes, well, to yes. the top four now. And this is the first time we have seen that secret secret tech in the side deck. Yeah, that's and, um, ridiculous. Quite, that's really ridiculous. Quite honestly, yeah, like you said, I'm very impressed as well. Um, I think if you... <laughs> I think that Michael Wichero is just going to run over to our vendors again. Yes, he's going to buy some <laughs> secret village. He's like secret village. How got many got do you got? got any? Up by them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, we might have lost Michael Wichero for our top four feature match. <laughs> and, um, but I, I guess that's the price we're willing to pay if we're seeing secret and hot tech like this. The secret village of the spellcasters. It has been used before yeah. in the past, but right. now it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, this is one of the things that we see quite a couple of times. Even when a card is good, if it's suddenly not so good anymore, just for like two months, everybody seems to forget about the card forever. Yeah. It's not like people are revisiting, oh, what was good like two formats ago, three formats ago, and then come up with um, appliances for these cards in the current format. Yeah. I, I don't see that often enough. Very often I'm asking guys, how is this possible? Is, is there not some window of opportunity when like one of the old decks that got hated out of the meta game is now good again? Yeah. We have seen that with uh, Lights One yesterday. Marvin Weber was uh, 3-0 at some point. I think he didn't make day two, so the rest of his day wasn't going that successfully. But uh, sometimes you have to try out a different or old strategy, and it's suddenly shining again. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it, it's interesting that we, with so much anti-meta, the best anti-meta deck at the time that can run all of the anti-meta cards without worrying about it was Yosenju. Um, in, uh, it's interesting to see that we didn't see any th anything really do quite well the Yosenju. No, no, and we didn't have them in our top 32 breakdown. So w we had 21 Necros, just to recap. So Necros, even though it wasn't as dominant at the beginning of the tournament as we thought, they were going up in relative numbers. From day one to day two, they were gaining, relatively speaking, of yep. course. And then uh, they were gaining again uh, with 21 in the top 32. And now we are looking at four across in the top eight. That makes 50% of the field. Yes. But uh, there are many decks that are being built to catapult you into the top 32. Uh, just to have the element of surprise in the Swiss rounds. Yep, there's it's there's so many rogue decks that you can't build to just be one deck. You need to be prepared to be able to get yourself into the top yes. and then start fighting for it. And we have seen guys uh, building decks to specifically combat Necros. One of my friends was running Six Samurai, Giovanni Capecci. We've had a couple of times on the coverage because he's always coming up with these uh, ridiculous and creative ideas. Yeah. And round one he gets paired against heroes. So he's like, hmm. It's not exactly what I wanted to see. Loses 2-1. He's like, okay, I can still do this. Round 2, gets paired against heroes. Loses 0-2. At that point, he's already like, oh my god, this day is not going according to plan. Round 3, you want to guess? Heroes? How? <laughs> Although he, there was quite a few heroes. It was one of the shortest tournaments of his career. He wasn't very much amused. So 
even if you seem to have the perfect game plan against Necros, you cannot come with a deck that is not doing well against all of these other decks in the field. Exactly. And, uh, well, we're going to be talking to Chepe in just a second to hear about that secret village of the spellcasters and the other amazing cards that he found to put Shadol into the top four, into the semi-finals of YCS Bochum. Definitely. I mean, it's... it's it, oh. I love the side deck. The side <laughs> deck is fantastic, and that tech, that tech works. Completely. All right, we're just going on a short break. You know the drill by now. One or two minutes, and then we're going to be back with an interview with the champion semi-finalist of YCS Bochum. It's time to. It's time to. Anything without the chip, you let me quit my rent. 